This is not the real moon. What I mean is, it doesn't tell the whole story. There's something missing here. We're all used to seeing the moon as that dull, lifeless gray rock floating through space, either with our eyes, through a telescope, or even in most photos we see. But there's something hidden below that familiar gray surface. You see, buried in all of that light is color. Now, when I first saw one of those colorful moon photos years ago, I thought they were fake, but it turns out they're real. And they actually tell a story. You know, you're not just seeing something pretty, but you're actually seeing these chemical fingerprints. So what are these colors? Why can't we normally see them with our eyes? And what do they reveal about the moon's past and our future? Well, let's dive in and explore the hidden colors of the moon. You've probably heard the old myth, the moon is made of cheese. It sounds ridiculous, but like most things, there's actually a story behind it. One version goes back to an old folktale. A clever fox tricks a hungry wolf that's hunting him by telling him the moon's reflection in a nearby well is a wheel of cheese. The wolf, desperate for an easy meal, starts drinking the water to reach the wheel of cheese. Unfortunately, he drinks so much water, he actually bursts, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> the actual phrase comes from the Renaissance era, which says, the moon is made of green cheese, green meaning unripened cheese. It was a metaphor. It basically was describing somebody who is so easily tricked that you could tell them the moon is made of green cheese and they would believe you. Ironically though, it turns out the moon does have color, just not the kind we can see with our eyes at least here from Earth. When the first astronauts reached the moon, they talked about how the surface had various shades of light and dark gray. Even photos they took showed a barren, colorless landscape. But then in 1972, something strange happened. Apollo 17 astronauts were exploring the lunar surface when they spotted something unexpected. Wait a minute, what? There is orange soil. It's all over. To help me understand the moon's colors, I called up Dr. Allison McGraw, an award-winning scientist reshaping what we know about the planets. The Apollo astronauts found orange glass beads. These orange glass beads are still sort of one of the strange mysteries on the surface of the moon. This was completely unlike anything seen before on the moon. These were clues telling us that the moon might not be as colorless as we thought. In the 1990s, the Clementine spacecraft mapped the moon in various wavelengths, revealing subtle color variations across its surface. Today, astrophotographers like myself can easily take these colorful moon photos. But if these images show color, why can't we normally see them with our eyes? And why don't they show up in all moon photos? To answer that question, I'm actually going to take one of those photos myself. It's called a mineral moon photo, and let me show you how it's made. But first, I want to give a quick thank you to Outdoor Photography Guide, the sponsor of today's video. Outdoor Photography Guide helps you become a better outdoor photographer through video instruction and in-depth lessons taught by professional photographers. They've got everything from landscape tutorials and camera settings to photo editing and walkthroughs. And it's all online, so you can learn at your own pace. If you know me, I usually don't take my camera out unless the stars are out. But over the years, I've visited so many insanely beautiful places that deserve to be photographed. I used to live in the California Redwoods, and before I got into photography, I would always talk about how amazing and stunning that area was. But nothing can capture the beauty and awe of the Redwoods like a photo. Thanks to Outdoor Photography Guide, I've been learning how to take photos that do these beautiful places justice. Their instructors walk you through everything, including editing in Lightroom and Photoshop, in a way that's not overwhelming, especially if you're just getting started. If you're an experienced photographer who's maybe feeling stuck with photography, there's tons of advanced content on there to help inspire you and approach photography in a new way. As a member, you get access to hundreds of tutorials, live events, and an amazing community of outdoor photographers. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the video description below will get a full year of premium membership to Outdoor Photography Guide for just $1.49. All right, now back to taking this photo of the mineral moon. Tonight, I'll be using my mirrorless camera and a telescope, but anyone with a DSLR and a long lens can take these kinds of photos. At first, it looks like any other moon photo, gray and detailed, but nothing out of the ordinary. However, buried in the data are subtle traces of color, and it's gonna take a little bit of extra work to reveal. These colors are invisible to the human eye. They're just not sensitive enough to pick up on those differences, but the camera can. The sensor is able to pick up all of those subtle variations in color that our eyes can't see. If I take this raw photo and process it, something amazing happens. 
By carefully increasing the saturation, the moon's hidden colors start to come out. Now to be clear, I'm not adding color. Boosting the saturation just increases the intensity and the visibility of the colors that are already in the photo. But there's a limit. If I push too hard, noise and artifacts start to appear and they distort the image. But there's something I can do to get cleaner, deeper colors. Instead of taking just one photo, I can capture dozens or even hundreds of photos and stack them together. Doing this will reduce noise, which lets me reveal those colors more clearly than any single image ever could. These colors aren't just a result of image processing. There's actually something really cool happening here. In the 1600s, Sir Isaac Newton noticed that sunlight is more than just the white light that we're used to seeing. It's actually made up of a spectrum of colors. And he demonstrated that using this thing right here. It's called a prism. And if you've ever seen the Pink Floyd album cover, it demonstrates exactly what it does. And I'll show you right here. The colors that we see are actually just different wavelengths of light. These wavelengths of light actually slow down when they hit the prism. This slowing down causes the light to bend and different wavelengths bend at different angles. So we see that separation in this display of colors. Wow, it's so strong and prominent. It's even projecting on the wall, look at that. Since sunlight is made up of various wavelengths of color, when it hits the lunar surface, each color interacts with different materials in different ways, depending on that wavelength. So some colors are reflected, some are absorbed into the physical material, sometimes that actually physically heats up material, um, but essentially this is an interference problem. Because of this interference, the resulting colors that we see can actually give us insight about the material reflecting it. The orange-red rust-like colors are reflections from iron oxide minerals. Those yellowish colors, they indicate regions rich in aluminum, but the areas that stand out the most are those blue patches on the surface. This is indicating often a mineral called ilmenite. This is a titanium rich oxide. White light coming from the sun interacting with that ilmenite and depending on how thick the layer is, again, physically in the grains, that will then have internal reflections and essentially blue makes it out. And you get to see those really neat blue patches on your stacked images. So the next time you see the moon lit up in the blue, the reds and the greens, you know, you're not just seeing something pretty, but you're actually seeing these chemical fingerprints. So it's, you know, planetary history written in stone, but illuminated in color. I love that. <laughs> That's so cool. These colors and minerals we're seeing are like a geological map. They tell us about the moon's violent past and its potential for humanity's future in space. But before we get into that, I still had one question I needed answered. You know, what What about the different shades of gray? Like, what are the grays that we're seeing? Almost the entire moon has the problem of being draped in what we call lunar regolith as well. Regolith is a fancy term for lunar dirt. It's literally the same grain size and consistency as flour in your pantries at home. So the fact that there's also dust on top of rock features um, is technically adding to truly what the true shade of gray that you're seeing is. But how did these minerals get here in the first place? Well, to understand that, we have to understand that these are more than just reflections on the lunar surface. They're evidence of ancient cataclysmic events. Around 4.5 billion years ago, as the young Earth was still forming, something happened that would change our planet forever. A Mars-sized object came hurtling through space, smashing into the early Earth. The impact was so powerful that it literally tore chunks from both planets, vaporizing and ejecting material into orbit around the Earth. Over time, that material formed into our moon. But that was just the beginning. The newly formed moon was a molten sea of liquid rock, thousands of degrees hot. As it cooled, the heavier elements like iron began sinking towards the moon's core. But wait, if heavy elements like iron sank to the moon's core, why do we see traces of it on the lunar surface? Around 4 billion years ago, our solar system experienced a period of cosmic violence. The moon and the entire inner solar system was pummeled by comets and asteroids. But those impacts didn't just leave craters on the moon. A lot of heavy metal rich material floated up during that, but it doesn't want to be there. You know, dead stuff wants to go to the core, but essentially uh, was kind of forced up there due to this catastrophic impact went back into the mantle and then those volcanic planes that shoot out and infill the basin, that is like double processed molten lava. 
When we photograph the moon, we can actually see the result of these ancient events. The blue color in the Sea of Tranquility is an example of where titanium-rich magma poured out of these fissures. In the Sea of Showers, we can see a mixture of blues and rusty colors. But this isn't just an ancient story, because these minerals on the moon may be the key to unlocking humanity's future in space. NASA is currently studying the potential of using lunar resources to support lunar outposts. There's also been ideas proposed to use iron that's on the moon to 3D print parts or tools for a future colony. You know, right now, a lot of that stuff seems like science fiction, especially because there's so much we don't know about the moon. But one thing is clear. If we want to stay on the moon, not just visit, we need to use what's already there. Beyond all the minerals that we've been talking about, there's actually one resource on the moon that has been capturing more attention than any other. Water. In the permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles, scientists have detected frozen water ice. So these crater walls and floors are in permanently shadowed regions. You'll see this a lot with Artemis III because they're going to a permanently shadowed region. This PSR is the, the place to go get the ice mineral. You can imagine that we use water in a huge amount of like production. And this could be then used for any operations on the moon you could dream of, whether it's human operations or cutting operations. Water can be mined, melted, and converted into drinking water, breathable oxygen, or even rocket fuel. That kind of self-sufficiency is critical for long-term exploration. It means fewer supply runs from Earth and the freedom to explore farther, stay longer, and do more. Right now, engineers are actually experimenting with ways to turn lunar regolith, you know, that powdery stuff on the surface, into bricks. We can actually make bricks out of compacted, heated up lunar regolith dirt. So you heat up that lunar regolith, so it's pretty fine grained. We talk about it being just like the flour in your pantry. The surface area exposed uh, wants to find each other and melt together. How cool is that? Imagine future moon bases all built by the dust that covers the entire lunar surface, that regolith, powered by water mined in the moon's shadows. What once looked like a desolate, lifeless world is now revealing itself as a place full of potential. The more we look up and learn about the universe, the more we realize just how deeply connected we all are. And that perspective is something the world needs right now. So if you like this type of astro content, consider liking and subscribing. It helps grow the channel and it lets us bring space to more people.